All right. We're all in here on one screen. We're not all in here on the other screen, but we're about to build a boat for the second time, but we're about to do it with the expert guidance of this man, Kevin King uh, of Southern Charm. They actually bought the exact boat that we want, and they actually have already accomplished the feat of buying the boat. I don't even know if it's a feat. You got it dumb, though. They have bought the boat. So we're we actually thought- We're sitting on the boat. We're literally sitting on the boat right now. We also have been drinking. How many times? Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. This is gonna be a um, a drinking video, so every time that Damon says literally, you have to take a shot. I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> literally amazing. Or blah blah blah. Oh, or blah blah blah. <laughs> so, as you can see, I got a lot of people that are uh, harassing me. If I cut out law, then I got Kevin. Anyway, so any we are going to build a catamaran. Law and I have done this before. I think we posted the video. Did we posted the video. We did. Okay, so we posted the video, we built one before, but now you've had the boat for, how long have you had the boat? Uh, basically the <clears throat> shipment from the factory in South Africa came over and was delivered to Fort Lauderdale, just catamarans in early February of 2020. And we put it immediately in with just catamarans and they did our post factory thing. So we really took ownership of the boat and, and started taking it off sailing first of March, 2020. Nice. So, yeah. Okay, so I basically said, Kevin, will you go back through and build a boat with me and tell me the things that you wished you had got from the factory and the things that you wish you had not got from the factory, essentially. And the things that you're happy you got and from. The, yeah, so the <clears throat> things you're happy you got from the factory, the things you wish you had not got, and the things that yeah. you just went to just catamarans yeah. and, and got, essentially. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Hopefully so, I can remember and recall all these things because <laughs> I've got some timers now, but yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, sure. And, and a little yeah, uh, yeah. a little alcohol. And for anybody that's asking, he's having a, a very manly uh, mango margarita. I'm drinking mezcal, which I mixed with rum because that's it's, what I did. Uh, and La is also having a mango, mango margarita. Mezcal is just another word for roofies, right? <laughs> it makes you sleepy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a fact. So. Anyway, we're sharing the screen right now, so mm -hmm. we can see the screen. Um, so the layout, Lon, I know for a fact, let's see if we can change the layout. So you, oh no, so four cabins. Yes. So that's what you guys got because you guys are gonna charter as you guys got the four cabins. We chose the four cabin because we wanted to charter and wanted to be able to live in one cabin and rent out at least three others so we could support six couples, which keeps us in the uninspected passenger vehicle realm meaning we don't have to be inspected by the US Coast Guard and an OUPV license would accommodate that as well what's and an OPV license? OUPV stands for operator of uninspected passenger vehicles it's a Coast Guard license <laughs> it's kind of the first step they also call it the six-pack license meaning you can be paid for charter for up to six paying passengers Got so it. that's the OUPV without being inspected yeah inspected yep cool all right yep. so four cabins uh, Law and I, the one thing that we do know, and you and I have talked about this, because we will use it um, within reason to do some sort of uh, thing that will be monetary and we can write off, while at the same time, I, I just personally do not think I want to charter the boat mm -hmm. at this point, right. um, is we're going to take the fourth cabin and we're going to turn it into a workroom. Workroom, a yeah. utility room, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can, if we weren't going to charter, I could definitely see the value in that. And I know many other Leopard 50 owners who've done that, who are happy with that decision, but if you're gonna charter, that would just limit you to be able to charter to two, two couples, which is very limiting, but it's a great uh, option if you don't need to do the yeah. chartering or want to do the chartering. It's not a bad option, you know, if you don't need it. And that's the smallest cabin or bedroom as well. Cool. All right, so um, this might have all our information in here from the first time we did it because I just logged back in. Okay. So uh, let's start out with interior. So, oh, utility room in lieu of, for, of port right. forward cabin. So I don't even necessarily need right. you to to, sure. to do that. We definitely, yep. Law and I have already discussed okay. we want that. So we're gonna do that. Uh, upholstery pack one. Yep, we faux. took we took the faux leather milk package is the one that's inside. The one thing we did not anticipate was we thought that when we chose the interior color, the outside color would be the same, okay. and it was not. So that was a little unexpected, and because of that, we actually changed the color of the teak we did at Post Factory 
to blend more with the gray versus the beige that's inside or the milk color inside, the more grayish color outside. It wasn't a big deal, but it was something that we weren't expecting on the front end, if Wait, that makes sense. Did you did you notice that? I didn't. Let me grab something. So, Hang on. I'm gonna show it. I'm gonna show the camera. Yeah. We it is nighttime here. It we night. we're literally sitting in Charleston. So but if the camera can see this, you've got the gray back here, right? Uh, it's and you've got the tell, and you got yeah. the beige right here. But if you look I mean, you can tell it's different. It's yeah. not the same. And we thought when we picked that that's that was going to be the same throughout, and yeah. it wasn't. Okay, so upholstery there... pack one, you guys got milk, and you're saying this is the milk? This is the milk color, yes. This beige color. And yep. Did you okay. even have the option of doing them the same? The outside is all the same on every on every boat. They're all the same. The gray from the... From the factory. So what color is this? Can you match it? No, no. No, you this never is, match this it. This is what you get, no matter what. Yes, you can match the inside though. Huh? Yeah. You can make the inside. Well, you can make the inside gray, but the outside oh, okay. is going to be gray no matter what. That's okay. What so, so the moral of this story is, if you want your cushions on the inside to match this, what should we be picking right here? You should here? be picking the. Uh, <laughs> Click. PDF there's. Uh, I think it may be the. Well, artesian. Mm. I think it's artesian. Yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. That looks dark. That it looks does look kind of dark. That looks it? dark. There's the pebble and the stone. Hmm. Maybe the stone. Stone looks more like it, doesn't it? But the milk looks more gray than it really is as well. I'm hmm. missing stone. Stone makes me think. Yeah. No, but it's textured. This should be something that a the salesman. The stone looks textured to me. <clears throat> It was one of those things that was not a question we need to ask. Yeah. Do you think that's this texture right here, though, babe? Mm -mm. Yeah, so, all right, we're already into this. That's probably something that you should talk to your salesman your, about. Your salesman about how, so, how do we make sure if that's something that you're yeah. going to be worried about. If you want the outside cushions to match the inside. But one thing I will say, the cushions from the factory, we've been very happy with. And I'll tell you partly why, and I'll show you this. These factory cushions come with the starboard piece underneath, so it's very rigid and has a hole to drain. And so these are very rigid and hold up well, where a lot of cushions you do post factory will be all material all the way around and won't have and this break, rigid. they break down. They break down, so these have these, you know, rivets or whatever you want to call them that fit into the recessed holes that lock it into place. They don't always stay and they strip out occasionally so you have to re you know reseal them but or re, re you know screw them but um these have been overall we've been satisfied with these okay yeah, that's so, something yeah. that a lot of people try to save money on and go and make their own cushions but you're saying that it's definitely from the factory there we were happy with the quality yeah. for okay. sure so i'm thinking that more than likely just for this situation we just go with milk or artesian which doesn't cost us anything additional and it right. looks as close it's as included. anything, but ask your salesman. So right. um, let's just go with, uh, let's just go with milk. You good with that? Yeah. It blends with the cabinetry. All right. Um, carpets and cabinets and corridors. The boat show boats will usually sh They'll usually have boats on display that have the carpet and the cabins, corridors, which is very comfortable and nice. But we felt like it was uh, more difficult to get into the underfloor storage. Mm -hmm. and, that makes total sense. Yeah, and, and we felt like we could replicate that with more customized runners and different rugs that, uh, you know, that Elizabeth picked out that would go, that would be more of a focal point or more, of, more decorative yeah. than what they would give with just a, you know, a bound carpet runner type of thing and so we chose not to do that and yeah. we've been pretty happy with the result and most of the runners cover most of the walking area anyway mm -hmm. so we've been happy with that decision that's a way to customize right. too is just right. your own style yeah make it your own i like that plus you can just get something super cheap that like oh do the, do it the other way there you go um do a little bit more i already did okay um I gotta not do that again. But anyway, you get cheaper carpets that you can just toss and replace if they get gross and like whatever. 
accidentally scrolled with the back button for anyone watching this. I apologize. Uh, so that was the carpets. Uh, yeah. Full length mirrors. We did add that. If you'll notice, you know, behind the doors, yeah. there's mirrors already there. I actually really have you it. used it? Yes. Yep. You have? Multiple so you, times. You, you enjoy it? Love it. Yeah. I actually, um, I wear a hat a lot, but today I did my hair, and I actually think you were in the restroom, and I did my hair in that mirror. Because yeah. it's the one on the back of the door, yep. right? That's right. So okay. that was one of those things for us. It was just one of those things. We could buy mirrors cheaper and glue them on or put them on ourselves, but honestly, we did not want to waste the time and the energy on doing that. But we've been happy with them so far, and it hadn't been an issue. So I would probably do that again, just to save time. Um, I don't really think I need to ask this. I mean, based on, I mean, we've been using uh, the hell out of it, but just in case there's something I don't know, the four peak berth uh, port plus air conditioning supply. Mm -hmm. The four peak berth is the port Ford, and we did not finish it out as a berth. We finished it out as, we call, I call it the garage. It's where we store our water toys, you know, overflow of different items like extra fenders or whatever. So we didn't find a need to add air conditioning or a bed there, and we skipped that option. If we were going to try to charter with four bedrooms in a you know charter guest of eight and needed a crew cabin, that would be the alternative to do that, and we opted not to do it to do that. So, so if we went with the storage room mm -hmm. and we don't do this, are we still, to your best of your knowledge, going to end up with air conditioning in my workroom? Yes, you'll have air conditioning there. Okay, All you right. just wouldn't in the. Port Ford, what I call the garage. Babe, it's like if you have a skipper or a captain, it's it's another place for them to have a bedroom. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Until okay. you want them to have and air conditioning if, if they're going to sleep if there. If somebody's going to sleep there, then you have you need to put air conditioning yeah. supply okay. in, into right. that. Uh, safe with digital combination lock. Okay. Interesting with this is I don't remember ordering this, but we got it. <laughs> okay. And it's a basic. Uh, safe like what you would get in any hotel room where you plug you open it you put your stuff in you shut it you plug in a four digit code and say lock and when you come back you plug in the four digit code again and it'll unlock it and so anybody can put stuff in it and put a four digit code in it and lock it so that's nice that you can change the code on a regular basis but um, it's it's one of these if you really read up on these types of safes there are breaks to it where you can right. actually get in with a sorry and we were talking yeah, about this like right. we when whenever we we wanted to buy a safe for for our home and it's probably easier to talk about that and we like the Costco safes versus the safe that we got when we went to an actual safe store uh, you can literally break down a Costco safe and what was it three minutes they ripped the door off of a Costco safe versus the safe yeah. that we got and I think like it, I'm not saying this is bad or not good or, or shame on it on them for doing what they've done because they're just providing what any hotel provides but i, I don't think that uh, it's worth in, in some cases trip. there's actually a break a, a workaround with a barrel key that can open it without the combination right. and so right. you've just you and know if it's you not, and i know that i think yeah, a professional a thief is yeah. going to know that <laughs> That's right. so um interior saloon blinds front and sides yes so in the galley area or the you know We've got three sides, the port, starboard, and forward area that are all enclosed totally and from the factory. And we have been very pleased with those so far. So that's a yes. Yeah, it's that. a definitely yes. I would do that again. The, it does not include the aft part of the galley. So the part that if you're if you're stern to in a dock area and people are walking on the dock, they would be able to see right into the aft part of the boat and see anything going on. So we chose a post factory company, Creative Canvas, to do the, the blinds in the back area. They're not cheap, but they are well done. And it gives us a complete enclosure where we don't feel like people are looking in the fishbowl at what's going on inside our boat. Yeah, you it know, gives you complete privacy. Exactly, exactly. Um, salon, table, coffee table, um, double bunk. So the, this three in one option offers a fixed dining table that can drop down into a lower. So this is one lawn I've talked about. I don't, what, did you guys get this? Yep. Did. Yes. Okay. Our, our table will fold, those corners fold in and it turns about a quarter turn right. so that you have a big open square table or you fold it down into a smaller square table that's more like a coffee table. Mm -hmm. Then you can release the tension and let it drop down to where it's lower like mm -hmm. a coffee table. Or you can open it back up and lower it down and turn it where it breaks down and you add the cushion to make it a full bed. It's a full bed and I'll tell you it's a big bed. It is 
have you least guys, a queen. Have you guys used it yet? Yes. Okay. We used it when our kids were on here. That's what I wanted. Because um, we were literally law and hour. Like, if we had nieces and nephews, it like, we'd probably make a little... Specifically, since we're doing yeah. the, the utility room, yeah. Right. we wanted that extra op so option. So, in your, in your option, planning that out, you're going to have six people before mm -hmm. you need that as a bed. Yeah. For mm -hmm. us, we can house eight people before we need to use that as a yeah. bed. And it's very convenient. It's also good for passages. Great for passages if it's cold outside and somebody doesn't want to sleep in the aft cockpit to be next to the helmsman. Mm -hmm. You can actually be just inside, even if these wind the doors or windows are open or closed. That's just as close, but it's a little more comfortable and a little bit more room to sleep, and you can sleep more than one person yeah. if you're breaking down that bed. But it does have an extra cushion that we stow away, so it is a little cumbersome to pull that out, put it out, you know, put mm -hmm. it back out and set it up to make a bed. Oh, I think it makes total sense. It does. All right. right. On to engines and drives. So you and I have already talked about this a lot of times. Um, the Yanmar 80 horsepower, like I think the unanimous decision or the unanimous consensus from anyone who's bought a 50 is if you don't go with the 80 horsepower, it just isn't enough engines. I've boat. talked to many boaters on other, you know, there's been a Fontaine Peugeot across the, the dock from us that's a 45 uh, Fontaine and they came with the basic 40 or 45 horsepower Yanmars. We had talked and discussed ahead of time, you know, we're coming in, bouncing up and down the east coast. We come in and out of a lot of inlets with a lot of surge and tide and everything else and there's times when you really need that extra horsepower and it's nice to have it when you really need it and so we did opt for the 80s so far we've had no regrets you know at high rpms it may burn a little bit more diesel fuel but it's really a a cheap alternative and we feel like we've got more if we need it mm -hmm. versus not having enough if we need it so and yeah. bigger is always bigger better. is usually better <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then Yanmar VCS electronic throttle and engine display. That was one I was actually really curious about and her and I went back and forth and I was like, I mean, that's kind of cool to have it, but also my personal opinion and correct me if I'm wrong or like what your thoughts are. Any, an additional electronic is like just an additional thing in my mind that could potentially that's, break. I agree with you. And so I think this is a highly technical aspect to the engines that we did not opt for. That could be really neat that gives you breakdown of each cylinder head and temperature and all those kind of things which can which can be neat but it can also be a complication that gives you more things that can break and go wrong that you have to service in a lot of cases when things get more complicated they become less able to service yourself and they end up being have to serve be, being serviced by a yanmar technician and so it, it could create problems that we opted not to do this and uh, you know it's hard to say if we regret that or not at this point because I've never seen the you know seen you seen haven't this, seen a pro or a con yeah, of it. Yeah, my opinion on everything yeah. is if it can go wrong, it will go wrong, and this is just something I don't think I've put it on a single one that we built. I don't know, I can't remember, but yeah. I feel like if it can go wrong, it will go wrong, yeah. and that's just an additional thing to have the solve. I will tell you a, a unique thing that we found out along the way was that we we actually discovered that um, the the controller for the starter. You can actually take off of the helm station, take it down to the engine room, and plug it in, and start the engine direct. If you needed to bypass, uh, you know, the connectors, it'll actually plug in directly. And we've had a situation where, had we known that, we could have tried that, where we had one engine on and one engine not starting, and that would have been a cool fix. So that that's a possibility. It's kind of like the old. Um, harnesses you have for stereos in your car mm. yeah, yeah. it's that kind of thing it's a harness that fits and so you take your controller off your you know your on start stop right. section pull that off the dash take it down to the engine room okay. plug it into the plug harness it in. and, and do it from there and you're bypassing any potential shorts or whatever and that was an interesting thing to learn that was I mean that would bonus. definitely yeah. help with yeah. troubleshooting just exactly. right off the bat exactly um, cool all right so we're not gonna do that uh, and okay navigation and electronics so the fusion marine stereo with docking station and saloon bluetooth usb and aux connectivity yes. yep. <clears throat> i would say yes we did this we like it i've talked to other boaters um, that have tried other options like bose and you know mm. bose is a great brand it's got a great sound mm. but bose was not meant for a marine environment mm. and uh. the people who did that regretted it because it wasn't long till those speakers and 
the you know the receiver and everything else just went Wasn't nuts. Wasn't used for moisture because of the moisture salt water environment. So this right here, literally the Fusion Marine stereo, that like they designed this for essentially boats. for boats, marine, yes. so yes. on and so forth. It's a forth. marine so, based okay. stereo, and we. Um, I mean, we've heard your speakers, <clears> and they we can make it as loud as we want. Yeah, I think it's plenty great. loud yeah. for anything we've wanted to do, and we actually have it broken down into zones where you have the forward seating area as a zone. The galley is, is a that, zone. Is that what we're getting into here? Is the external speakers? Yeah, and yeah exactly. Cockpit? That's, okay, that's so right. we're going to go ahead and do this. Law said, yeah, you said yes, definitely yes, do it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, For so sure. that one. And then, you, so you're saying yeah. you guys got this, right? The external speakers? Yes, in the Ford cockpit. Yep. yep. And then... And then the external speakers on the coach roof lounge, which is up. Oh, yes. And that gives you speakers yeah, was, to the flybridge. Yeah, that literally nice. the first time we... we Met you okay, guys yeah. in person yeah. and so on and so forth. We, we were spent all of our time. We up there. spent all our time up there. Yeah, we've been up there. You laid yeah. out up there. I think yeah. that makes. Yeah. So there's four zones you can control independently, or you can raise them all together at the same time. It's re it's been nice. We've been happy with it. Okay. So right. the base pack I think is required to do a lot. Well, hang on. <laughs> oh, that's the Raymarine. That's for your navigation. And how do you yes. feel about that? Yes, I like the Raymarine so far. I've not had any issues with it. Um, we opted to go for the 12 inch Axiom and we like that. So that's the next That's one. the MFD, the multifunction display. And it is a little bit bigger. The one thing we did add was the additional um, controller that allows you to, it was a post factory option, but okay. if the screen is wet, it's it's really hard. It's kind of like having an oh, iPad Oh, you were telling wet. me that, right? It's like kind of like said, having, it's yeah. like if you have an iPad that's wet, it doesn't track right. Mm -hmm. okay. It has to be dry. Well, this gives you an extra display on the side where you can actually turn a dial or mm -hmm. push sides of it that, that gives you control if the display's wet. wet. If you're in a a really just a, an environment that's uh, heavily, you know, rainy or just there's stormy, or whatever. stormy and you've just got residual now moisture. Now we're going to get all. to this at some point, but with the enclosures, have you actually hit that point? We we have a couple of times when there was just heavy uh, thunderstorms and, and lots of humidity. Uh, lots of humidity. And, uh, so even though you had the enclosure, yep. the humidity and the environment right. made it so the screen yes. you you it, just couldn't. It just made it more difficult. You could probably wipe it off with your shirt or whatever, but just if you're going to be off shore cumbersome. for several days and, and, yeah. and you've got like salt residue on it yep. with the humidity, it will you'll need to turn it. And that's Elizabeth for everybody listening. Elizabeth from the North 40, she's putting in her two cents, yes. and it's valuable two cents as well. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not even being sarcastic that time. Yeah. So, so let me add back. one thing. We altered, you know, our, our uh, nav station to be more of a extra fridge freezer. Mm -hmm. A lot of boaters that bought the Leopard 50 bought a the Raymarine pack with the multifunction display at the helm mm -hmm. with an extra multifunction display at the nav station. And I said, eh, I'm gonna wait on that. I know that that multifunction display can Bluetooth to my iPad. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'll tell you two tricks. These are, man, this is worth gold. <laughs> One is, it's very, the, it has a lot of latency. So it's not like standing at the helm station where when you press a button, it press, it's like a few second delay before you mm -hmm. press something to see exactly what's going on, at, just like you would at the multifunction display. Secondly, Ray Marine, I've discovered upon lots of research, when you're trying to Bluetooth to the multifunction display from your iPad, if you don't connect to it within a few minutes of turning it on, it has a power down mode that saves energy that won't let you connect to it. So if you're having a hard time connecting to your multifunction display, turn it off and turn it back on, and, and then it. you connect to pair it, and then it'll work fine. But it is slower. So if I had it to do over again, if we were doing watches inside the galley, I would probably opt to have another smaller multifunction display in the galley area where I could see it without having to walk up to check, you know, our water levels or fuel levels or headings and I charts. Think, and I think that's about to be, yeah, 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 that's right here. So let's come back. So okay. this right here, Raymarine Base Pack, yeah, that's, yep. it. That's, 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 that's an that's, ad for that, sure. That's an ad. The 12 inch I, And I, I, I added the 12 inch. Yeah, yep. for yep. sure. I, yeah, I like yeah. having a bigger, I'm getting older, my eyesight's getting worse. <laughs> and then that's the additional display so, at the helm. That's so, what he's talking well, about. Well, no, no, no. The right. I-70 is oh, the little square ones. the little ones. Square one. They give you your, uh, your, the wind indicator, your ah, your okay. autopilot, those kind of things. There's we have three of them total, 
and you can change those to show whatever you want, your depth, your speed, speed over ground, right. et cetera. So, so we did add that, and, yeah. we, and we're happy with that. We're glad we did. Okay. And then the additional, so this oh, right that here is that's at the exactly. NAS station. Now here's the interesting thing, right? Because you've actually gone through Just Cats, and we can kind of talk about this maybe at some point, or Lana will talk about it in a different video. Just Cats is phenomenal. The customer service from everyone we've heard is phenomenal. So, so here's the interesting thing. If you have it put in, regardless of the fact that you guys completely changed where your nav station, you completely changed the layout, it really is like it's not even there and there's, there's space right. there. You could still, I mean, if you had anywhere, it, yeah. you, you can move it. They you could put it anywhere. Just Cats could have yeah. moved it virtually anywhere and just changed where the wires went. I, bl I believe the system that Raymond uses is called the CTOX system. So they have these hubs, like a network hub, right. that instead of being like an RJ45 cable that connects in, it's a special plug-in that's proprietary to you know the CTOX. But you literally take the uh, Raymarine MFD, multifunction display, and run the wire and plug into any available CTOX hub Right. And it's talking, it's connecting. So right. that's my understanding of how that works. So, so uh, in, hi in, in hindsight, is this a yes? You wish you, you like, yes, let's get it? Or is this a let's, I think, let's wait and... I and think wait. Elizabeth and I both agreed that we wish we had another display down below where if there was heavy weather, we could do a watch from inside, protected mm -hmm. and covered. Um, but we've also kind of had, not arguments, but debates on where would we put it? You know, we just like, where would be right. the best... Right, we, would, sure. we would love to find a really great place to put it that is a polar opposite of being at the helm station because we can just jump up there and see it. But and then here, would be here, nice? here's my question: to the best of your knowledge, knowing what you know right now, and knowing like hell, you might change your your mind a month from now or a week from now. Would, would you go ahead and add this right now, or would you just wait and get it, get the whole thing, all of it, the wiring, whatnot, from just cats? Because you could do that. I, I, would do, I guess it would depend on the cost, but it's kind of the same either way. It's the same right. display. And I've actually seen the multifunction displays online a lot cheaper, but then I'm the one responsible for the warranty or the mm -hmm. installation and so forth. So you do get that warranty and that guarantee of people who are putting it in who know what they're doing. They do yeah. hundreds of these versus me trying to figure it out and see if it works or not and if it doesn't i'm like ah oh, shoot back to but, the drawing but it, board but, but but coming back to what i said yeah. have just cats do it or have it from the factory and just cats is going to move it if if you you do i would nothing. say the factory is probably going to be limited on where they're willing to put it and i think right. just cats will do about anything you want yeah. so do we so we do we buy it now or we wait for just cats? i'd wait for just cats okay in addition just cats i mean you have any issue they will answer Right. Yeah. I mean, they're amazing. The factory's not going to do that. Yeah, that's 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 In what. Side I, note: You didn't tell them. Just Cats basically does aftermarket customization on catamarans in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. In Fort Lauderdale, they are mm -hmm. excellent. This customer service has been incredible. Yeah. I will tell you. I'll be the first to tell you. They are not cheap. Mm -hmm. They are very expensive, but in a lot of in most cases, they're very worth it because yeah. they are ordering the parts, installing them, putting them in, warranting them. And I can call them any time, and they answer the phone and are happy to tell me, try this, try this, try this. Literally, it was Saturday. I don't know what time Saturday you were talking to your to your rep. I texted just, my rep, uh, yeah. Laurent, and not only did he, he didn't just text me back, he called me. Right. On a Saturday. Because he didn't want to text all that. It was easier to call. And I said, yeah. man, I'm sorry to bug you on Saturday. Call me back at your convenience. He called me back and said... I was afraid I'd forget. I didn't want to wait till Monday. Right. It's better to go ahead and call you today. So yeah. right. the customer service is incredible. I heard of boats trying to get in with just cats. They're, this is, we're in early October. They're backed up to January right now. Yeah. So yeah. they can't take any boats. So that just shows you their level of, you know, of uh, need and uh, so demand. We, so, so, I mean, based on what you said and based on kind of what I'm thinking, what I've heard from just cats, even if it cost me a little bit, and just knowing from you and the other people, boat owners that we've talked to that just cats have worked on their boats, they would take care of it. I'd rather have them do it and say, hey, you know what, we're gonna do this, but we're gonna do it after we get our boat. Mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna literally decide where, cause I don't think I'm gonna do the nav station exactly the way that you guys did it. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong, but I think I'll, I'll do it yeah. a little bit different. And maybe I want it there, maybe I yeah. want it, I, I don't know yet. 
it would be cool I'm when you're fill, thinking about when that. you're filling your water tanks if you could be down here washing dishes or doing whatever and just look up and say oh my water's almost full mm -hmm. from the dock you know water filler and so instead of having to walk back up here to check it and then you know go turn it off you could be doing other things easily yeah, I it's honestly just, it's just like convenient. literally the thing the very first thing that came into my mind and if you guys have been take a shot. in literally literally take a shot so <laughs> I was thinking, what what if it was up next to the ceiling, a little bit of an angle, right right by the the uh, the mast. Well, I was thinking, yeah, the the metal, the the yeah. the uh, what do you call it, stainless? Yeah. I love how they're that like bar. Looking, you guys can't see. Yeah, we're looking at an area way beyond. This get on a boat. We've said it before. Get, get, get on a Leopard 50 and 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 look at it. But, but that yeah, would, the, that would the be... about a four inch by four inch stainless pole that comes through the the peninsula of the the galley. Right. I think it would be a cool place to mount it, where maybe you could swivel it or whatever. I love you guys. Yeah. We're gonna be here for four hours. No, we're not. Sorry, <laughs> I like to chase squirrels. <laughs> okay, so that's that autopilot wireless yeah. remote smart control at nav station. Ah, it's awesome. We opted for that. It's literally a little battery operated pod thing. I can walk around the entire boat. When we're underway, I can say, turn the autopilot ten degrees to starboard. Turn it ten degrees to port one degree, whatever. And I can cycle through it and it'll show me my depth, our uh, speed over ground. It's a handheld, battery operated. I can be anywhere on the boat and control the autopilot. Love and it. It's pretty cool. That was pretty so neat that's, deal. you literally said I love, love it. it. That's, a, that's a buy. Okay. Yep. Uh, Digital radar. Digital okay. radar. I went back and forth with this. Um, we actually ended up with the, the HD uh, radome, the little bit nicer one. Um, I had visited a lot with Randy and Lenny on Happy Together, and he had told me that he was going to go for a different, uh, you know, a radar um, type of system. And when he, we finally met with him in person, saw the boat, he said he changed his mind. He went back to the one from the factory. So we got this from the factory, and it is the um, HD color radar, and it's been very, very valuable for storms and stuff coming up. But mm. the only negative I could say about this is when it seems like when you're, when you're in close range, your, your detail is a little degraded. It's a little not as quality when, oh, it's as it's crisp. close, like within a mile. But you see it from 20 miles out coming, and you know that when it goes into that little zone, it, you just don't get as much as too close. But, it, but is that something uh, that's an inherent weakness of this particular system, or is that an inherent weakness of all of the systems as as things get closer you, and just the way that they generally I would work. say I probably don't have enough experience to, to answer that, but I will say ours is really neat in that it overlays weather if you're running that radar. It'll also uh, show you, um, you know, targets that are boats or right. mm -hmm. cargo ships or whatever. And it also will overlay AIS and you can actually see if targets are a potential danger to hit you, they're red. If they're going away from you and not a danger, they're green. Mm. And so it's a visual cue as to what's going on and what's a threat and what's not. So that's a yes. We'll just go with that's the yes. That's a yes. We liked it. And this one right here, like, Lon, I've gone back and forth. You don't have it. I, I, I want it. Uh, I, I actually literally think I would put... Um, he just said literally take another shot. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. You're going to have to make another round of drink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want almost a fish finder that's even more forward looking. And I've done zero research on this thus far to find out about this. This is literally just the oh, shit. Oh. oh. Man, I'm going to have to get another drink. I'm out, man. <laughs> you need a truly? No. No? Don't. I'm going to have to do Unfortunately, this is, um, I'm not going to say it again, something I've, I've looked at. But, but here's the deal, and we, we will be here for four hours if we take too long. But I know that you hit a rock in a channel. You were completely like... But it wasn't on the map. Was WTF, not on the map, in the channel, so on and so forth. And for me, I almost said it. For me, I know that, that we now have the ability to have forward-looking sonar. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm like... Why not? Why not have forward-looking sonar and just have that? It's not going to cost that much. That, that additional yeah. like ability, 
it's not gonna matter if you're in a uh, hundred feet, a hundred meet. Well, maybe not a hundred feet, but like five hundred feet, a hundred meters of of water. It's gonna be irrelevant. The the one thing I would say that I don't because I've never used it. I don't so I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got the new FLIR stuff that's out. That's you know forward looking. You know infrared. You've got the sonar. You've got the down looking radar. I don't know when you're going five or six knots how far that sees in advance of if is, is it really going to give you enough, Ooh, notice enough notice to know but if i'm coming into an unfamiliar channel or anchorage at night mm. i could see the benefit of that going man i need to you know i need to make sure i line up the charts with my sonar and if it tells me something different i'm going to make an adjustment but i feel like if if it can read on a bass boat and again you guys can comment and call me you know tell me I'm foolish but if it can read on a bass boat when you're when you're fully using your um, sonar trolling motor oh, yeah. trolling motor moving at speed bass fishing can tell you what's in front of you quite a distance in advance it would give you you know I feel like it would give you enough warning that that maybe maybe you, you wouldn't slow hit down. that rock yeah, you, you, would, you yeah. would see it and be like hey I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna change course yeah. And for me, also, I like to fish, and so I just think that'd be awesome. And I, so yeah. I personally, I don't know if that's, that's the one I would the, get. That's probably not the one. Okay. If it's a down vision, you're gonna want. You got the forward looking, the down vision. Mm -hmm. There's multiple choices there, but that's something that's you a, probably kind of add a, aftermarket. And yeah. that's a personal choice if yeah. what right. you plan to do. With but it. I, I would probably spend uh, an amount of money that would just be foolish on that, yeah. just because a it would make me feel more comfortable, and b I would just enjoy the heck out of messing with it. Right. So, okay. so let's say we're not gonna do that from the factory. I'm probably going to get it later. After factory, okay. All right, this is an interesting one because we've talked about um, we've talked about this. So the one thing about the 50 foot leopard is that the helm station is only on the starboard uh, starboard. Ugh, I can't talk. Starboard anyway, side, side yep. the right for for land lovers there, the right the right hand side of the boat, which means if you're pulling up to the dock and the docks on the port side, the left side, you can't visually really. You can, See. but you can't tell, especially yeah. if the dock is lower, you can't tell where the dock it's, is. It's fairly blind. That's yeah. right. So, I personally want some kind of cameras, but I'm not convinced that the ones from the factory are the ones that I would want. So, we, we opted not to get these from the factory, but I, I'm kind of a camera buff. I'm a, you know, I'm a gadget guy. I like these kind of things. But I bought the Raymarine cameras post-factory and installed them myself tied them into the c talk system and um and they're working great you can see them right on the multifunction display and look forward or aft my original plan was to mount one of them on the spreaders looking down yeah. but as you look at the, the so wide sp yeah. sp spreader if you go up the mast there's two bars right. that typically come out those yeah. are the spreaders they help and support they, the standing rigging that's yes right. yep. yeah and give the mass stability right so i was thinking that looking downward from the spreaders would give me a better visibility of that port side but when you really look at the wide angle of that Raymarine camera, it's so wide that it gets so, the detail is so lost that it's really almost no good being that high, that far away from the waterline. So we opted to go ahead and go for a forward looking and an aft looking camera, more for safety and security with people on the boat while underway. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it didn't really accomplish what I wanted to from the get go, but <clears throat> it's still valuable. So you and I have had this conversation and this is one of those ones, I'm not sure exactly what I would get. I can't tell you guys in this video, like here's the thing, but I I think that there are, and, and there's a YouTube video, if I can find it and remember and post it and all that, I will post a link to it. But I literally think that there oh. is, gosh darn it. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Told you, he says literally a lot. <laughs> there are cameras that will give you an incredibly accurate visual display of exactly where your boat is kind of similar to the ones that are in your cars for parallel parking these days and and that's what i want i want to get yeah. that and and i would pay uh i i pay Good some money. extra bucks i pay some extra benjamins to uh to obtain and to add to that you saw where we added one of those those little bitty orange and mm. fluorescent poles it on the port looks side like a snow, a it snow does look it's like, like a, a snow, snow indicator yeah. Yeah. so from the helm i can see Right. a visual indicator of where my port side is to assist when I do have to mm -hmm. dock port two. And that's a temporary thing that I'm hoping, you know, as I've spent more time on the boat and docked on that side that we can get rid of. Yeah. But for now, it's a good visual cue that helps us. But it's relative, right? Because as we were coming back, we went out into the marsh, we're in um, uh, South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina. We went out into a marsh, I don't know exactly where it is. We had to go through a bridge 
And as we went through the bridge, the good thing is, is that the walls that we, of the channel that made up where we were going under the bridge were high enough that you could see them from the helm station. That's right. However, if they had been low, it, um, it, it, it wouldn't have mattered that we, we had that. That's right. Whereas if you have some sort of, of visual representation. Or you have to have a per another person watching. Yeah, that's right. yeah or, or you have to have another person. Yeah. Giving you self feedback. That's right. So I'm not going to get those here the okay. same way I'm, I'm going to do something aftermarket. aftermarket on that. Now, this right here is like if anyone knows, uh, what's AIS stand for all of a sudden? AIS is Automatic Information System. It automatic uh, Identification yeah. System, right there. Yeah, there you go. Yep. And it tells you basically <laughs> where other boats are if they have an AIS transceiver. You, there are some boats that just have a receiver so they can only see what others are transmitting. But we really strongly advise to get a transmitter and a receiver so you're broadcasting and receiving so other boats can see you and you can, and you can see, see them. them. And it's like a transponder for small aircraft um, when you're squawking, you know, different codes yep. that tell the, you know, shows you show up on radar. So to give you guys, again, because we will be here all night and Ma will be like, told you so. So when we were out uh, sailing slash motor sailing um, the other day because the wind was pretty light, we had a boat that was coming up that was a commercial vehicle uh, or vessel, commercial vessel that was coming and we could we knew exactly what their name was but but just as importantly they knew exactly who we were and they called us up on the radio and were like, hey Southern Charm, here's what our intentions are. What are your intentions? What are your intentions? Which direction um, are you going? Yeah. This is where we're And the communication was like easy peasy up. Easy, mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. like, I just felt like that was a lot more comfortable. I, there's not a chance in hell that and, I would want to not have And that. I think he was he was giving us respect from the fact we were a sailing vessel with full sail up, and he wanted to make sure we weren't going to tack back into his yeah. path and make yeah. sure we maintained course. Mm -hmm. And just by opening up the line of communications, we eliminated a potential hazard. So, right. Yeah, and that, like, that's the fastest, easiest way and, to And to that's how you know our name. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Because uh, otherwise you're like, hey, asshole, and the boat in front of me, what's going on? Yeah, so he actually knows. Twelve kilowatt global shore power. We, I'm losing my vision here. Um, Eight versus twelve. We have the global shore power that we upgraded several things with just cats after the fact. We mm -hmm. added, and I'm not sure what our shore power capacity is, but we have two, three thousand watt one ten inverters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's 6,000 watts of 110 power. Then we added with just cats a 220 watt inverter um, that can handle, I'm sorry, it's, it's a 220 volt 5,000 watt inverter for our 220 side. Yeah. And so, but this, get, this right here is only the global shore power. So this and, is literally the thing where you're yeah. plugging into to the, gosh darn it, I said literally. Uh, <laughs> Carolyn, <laughs> Carolyn. Uh, so we we plug in at 50 amps to the Is shore it power. Is past your bedtime? <laughs> 50 <laughs> amps shore power. Um, so I'm not sure what the kilowatts. Both of them say 50 amps, amps though right here. This is, 50. This is 50, one yeah. of the things that Lon and I have struggled with because what's the difference between the 8 kilowatt and the 12 kilowatt? We automatically assumed because we, for you guys that have been watching us, yep. we own our own business, we have electronics. Uh, a plethora. Yeah, I'm. I'm honestly not this sure which one we says did. Exactly. Did you say literally? But you only said at the beginning. Of it. I it's, said a it's plethora. Only Damon if says Damon it. says it, so yeah. yeah. It, it, to me, it looks like it says the exact same thing. Well, the the thing is, our um, generator is a nine kilowatt, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure what our our limitation was on global shore power, so I'm really not sure on that. Okay. I'm, Sorry, I can't answer that. I would say talk to your salesperson talk to find to your out. Sales person. Why don't we just do the twelve? Yeah, for now? yeah. They they do look like they're reading. We're all in agreement. Yeah. That when all else fails, bigger is better. So we're 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 adding the bigger is better option. The other thing is you do want those universal outlets. I think so that yes. you can plug in with any type of plug in at any time, yeah. and that's what we opted for as well. Universal out of the sockets. Yep, that's yeah. next. Battery charger. Yep. Personal battery charger. Did you guys do that? The additional battery charger? Well, no. We, you know, the, the thing you gotta remember is when your engines are running, you'll charge your start batteries for your engines. Right. If you run your generator or uh, you'll, your house bank will get recharged, and the solar will also recharge the house mm -hmm. bank. But our solar. 
uh, does not recharge our start batteries on the engines. So the best way for us to recharge our start batteries on the engines is to start the engines. Okay? So, anyway. I hear something. That's such a peculiar sound <laughs> coming from the background. Shaver outlets and heads, yes. Uh, that's a yep. yes for me. Yep. Did you guys do we that? Did. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Those are what give you those GFCI outlets so you can plug in a... Like know, hair dryer. Yeah, I couldn't shaver. remember if you yep. put them in or you went ahead and got them from the We did add there. extra outlets. I used outlets, it for but, straightener yeah. and hair dryer. So we did add an additional uh, inverter, but I think just cats did ours. I don't okay, know that so I did that from the factory. factory. Yeah. yeah. So we did all that aftermarket. Yep. That's so right. With all Victron, this... all Victron pieces. So we did that post factory. Okay. Um, and the reason why you knew or decided that you wanted to do these after after the fact, Victron. I remember you telling me those are just a better. They're the best that we've seen. You can Bluetooth to your from your phone to those to see what they're doing, what the charge rate is, if they're discharging or, or recharging, if they're in float mode or bolt mode. I mean, there's multiple things that are really handy to be able to do there. And we're about to get into this, but we opted to just get the minimum battery package of AGM batteries from the factory we could. And we knew we were gonna opt for lithium batteries, but we waited for just cats because the factory would only allow you to do a 200 amp hour lithium battery where post factory, the new technology coming out would allow you to get 300 amp hour mm -hmm. lithium batteries. So we literally, every, I said literally, but it was Damon, right? Yeah, okay. only Damon. All so these people have been hanging out every, with too much. Too much. So They're every two, L. every two 300 amp hour batteries would, would be an extra battery with less footprint and less yeah, weight less and everything space. else. So, so there's literally, oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> boom, you did it. Oh my goodness. Are we going to make it through here? I don't know. So, I'm going to have to start tears up on my top of so, the <laughs> So we, we ended up with six 300 amp hour lithium batteries for 1800 amp hours of lithium battery bank for our house bank, but left our start batteries for our engines at with AGMs. Okay. So we have a single AGM battery on the port side, a single on the starboard side. So then you side. did upgrade to the AGM batteries? No. Well, here? No. You know, we went to the lithium on the house bank. Okay. But we left the batteries for the start and the generator as is from the factory. Okay. So there's no reason to do any of these as additions because essentially what we You're replacing would think, and I already know there's going to be an option yes. that's right here for lithium but as you were yeah. saying essentially the, right the better there. option yeah. is to get these from just cats. Yes. Because that says only 200 amps. And, right, 200 yeah. amp. You're saying 300 amp. Yeah, which, for for those of you that know or have looked into it or watching this, and maybe you do, maybe you don't. So the batteries were in the in the galley, in the floor, in the floor, the, yep. and with the option that you guys chose, now your batteries are right in the aft cockpit, underneath the seat, facing yeah. aft, right there, right there. Yeah, which is, I mean, that freed up a ton of storage. A ton, that's, a ton yeah. of kitchen food, food and, and, yeah. storage. Yeah. That's like inside, inside. Yeah. The, the one thing you did pass over here was the link engine start batteries to house batteries. And I guess I had the impression that our our solar and our uh, other uh, house bank charging items would be charging our start batteries, but they do not. But we do have the ability at the helm to push the link button that will take the house batteries and use that voltage and charge to charge or start the start batteries which helps yeah. but i'm still looking at possibly doing a dc to dc charger to help with that and make it strong so, so this is the yes the absolutely engine. yes on that and i mean it's 219 dollars yeah. all day long yep. right do it just do it ventilation fans and cabins we opted for that and even with just cats on the starboard side added an extra fan in the VIP cabin and the master cabin. So we have two fans on the starboard side in each cabin or bedroom. On the port side, it was just a lot more difficult to add them. There wasn't enough room. Mm -hmm. And so they've just got a single fan. They're really but, nice because yeah. we're staying in the VIP side and the airflow comes out of that step. And those fans pull we the air yep. and push it into the bed. Yep. I didn't even notice that, but it sounds great. Sounds terrific. She sold me on I, I totally know it. But uh, when and you're in the Caribbean, me. you're gonna want those fans. Yeah, yeah. Right. for sure. No, it really circulated the airflow and I think made it more efficient and cool, cooled it down more. 
Okay, so the windlass up foot switch works okay. as a backup just in case the remote control for the windlass phase. So, you know, you got the little old, you know, if you if you remember what the old phones were that were actually mm -hmm. tied to the wall, you know, that had yep. the big yeah. long curly cue. Well, your control for your up and down on your windlass is tucked into the, you know, the um, the, the locker for the, for the anchor for and anchor. the windlass. But there's a switch on the deck there beside it that if that was ever fail or get a short in it, uh, you could actually flip the up switch up. It's almost like the electric winches down, you know, oh, okay. that you control, but yeah, it's yeah. on the fore deck and you flip it up and it, all its purpose is is to bring the anchor up if you were to have a failure on the on the handheld curly Q, you know, remote. And we opted for that. It was yeah. a cheap option and yes. so we've had we haven't had to use it yet, but it's kinda nice knowing you have that yeah, option. That for two hundred and forty four dollars exactly. it's really good. It's right. Right. So the next item here is the um, Genset 9KW, and we did opt for that. When you say the next option on the choice for you know um, your your options is provision for Genset, and that's where you're paying them to set up the boat to be ready for a generator with the mm -hmm. wiring or the through holes Flemish. or whatever. So if you choose the Genset 9KW like we did, you don't need a provision for the Genset. Mm -hmm. It's if you're going to add one later. Right. And so Law and I, the first time we saw yeah. this, we literally. Uh, Oh, literally. Gosh darn we, it. Literally, you're going to be drinking too much. Cheers, guys. I hope you're drinking, too. You're going to all be drunk. We today. had to go and Google what a gin set is. It's your generator on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the generator, which on this, there's dolphin. There, on the leopard is forward. It's in the port forward lazarette. Yeah. yeah. And. I have no idea what a lazarette is. It's just a big it's storage. A, a storage yeah. bin. Yeah. Storage right. bin. Yeah. So <laughs> we had to look yeah. that up. So that's your generator, and it will generate electricity whenever it, it your, your solar panels it, basically. It basically ongoing. imitates having shore power when you're in a marina when you're offshore, but it yeah. does run diesel, and it uses it pulls diesel off of your port, uh, off of your port tank. tank. And so we actually have the ability through our Raymarine to also move fuel from the starboard side to the port side, so, which is a great feature. But uh, our question was, was that the best option for a gin set that they provided? Or would can you get a better, like lithium, the lithiums, can you get a better but cheaper option? Could you get a better generator? Like a better than, value. Than what comes from the factory? Well, Northern Lights, and we learned this from our Atlanta Crossing last year, but Northern mm -hmm. Lights is one of the best generators out there. Good to know. Easy to, uh, to service, long life, works well. It just, they, the, the expression made to me from a guy who worked uh, in electronics said, they just freaking work. I mean, they just continually work. And we had just a little short in a, a wire that he came over and fixed in no time. But um, we've been happy. I don't know that we've ever found that we were short on power with our 9KW. It's been enough. It's been plenty. I mean, we have, back home, we have a 33, 3400 square foot house where we, we added a whole house generator with a, it's a four bedroom, three and a half bath house and it's got a 22KW Generac. Mm -hmm. Well, we're on a 50 foot sailing catamaran with a 9KW. I mean, right at half of what we have for our full home with a in-ground pool and pumps and, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. surely a 9KW would be enough, but okay. it just depends on what you're drawing. If you're running too many well, things at once. So, Northern, so Lights, Northern Lights, from everything you know, is yep. an amazing the brand. brand. Yep. So now, now it's just a situation and I will say this, because this is one thing Alana and I talked about, because we do own our own business, we're gonna run a lot of electronics. We mm. have uh, Elizabeth, you, your daughter, Law, and I. You guys have your own business that you, you're sort of doing, you're online, we all Everybody's have, we all have computers, iPads, we all, iPads. Have we all have our computers, we all have our cell phones plugged in, all that, plus we've had the air conditioner running every day for Elizabeth. <coughs> um, <laughs> and, and, there's been no issue whatsoever with, with this generator. Yeah. And you haven't had any issues at all other than you said you had a brief short, which is, yeah. I mean, that's, you know. The short was caused by a few loose connections mm -hmm. on the battery right. terminals, was fixed easily, replaced, no problem. Yeah. And and so, yeah, okay, so so that's a yes. why uh, why fix it if it ain't yep. broke? So I would do it again, for sure. Chilled water air conditioning, mm -hmm. 100%. For sure, we like this. now. A lot of people will say the chilled water air conditioning. You don't need that. You don't need that. 
it's the provision there. is only if you're not getting there. Correct. Set. They wire it ready to set it up for you. So you can just the chilled water air conditioning system, though, is a one single unit that provides the chilled air, and then each cabin has its ability to, cha to change the air handler to increase the air or decrease the air to their need for that room. So it's one system. Now, the one thing you'll notice on the Leopard is that if you're looking under the boat when it's running air conditioning, there's a lot of raw water coming back out because it circulates a lot of water to keep that system cool. Um, but it's like some boats, um, like our friends over here on OV, they have separate air conditioners in each cabin mm. that have its own raw water intake for each one. So if they had one fail, they would have all the other ones still working. Where if our chilled water for whatever, you know, quit working for some reason, it would affect all of the units. Interesting. So it's just a little bit different mentality on do you want to, you know, maintain so one or multiple. Just in case, can you can you get multiple on the Leopard 50? I guess that's that's even, it's not an option from the factory, but I do know people who have taken out the air handler from the master and added their own full unit to keep it separate so they can turn off the air for the entire boat and only run it for the master cabin. Mm. So you're running a lot less power draw so you can run it off the batteries, the lithium bank, without having to run a generator or without having to run the batteries or the engines yeah. to, to maintain. That's an interesting thing if we're not using, if we're not having a lot of people on our boat and we're just using the master cabin. You can cabin. minimize a lot of power uses there. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I just don't know that we're really gonna care that much. <laughs> Not tree huggers enough. Nope. Uh, so provisions for air conditioning. You wouldn't need that because you're going to get air. I would that. recommend it. All right, electric main sheet winch. Did you get that? We have three electric uh, winches. And you have so, the electric burling too, yep. No, not that's for the Genoa on the yeah. head sail, so we did not opt you for that. You did that? No. Nope. Oh. We, we just didn't think we needed it. It's too easy to roll up and pull out the Genoa. And we wanted to feel like we're still sailing. The other bit. thing I've uh, I feel like is that I f in the YouTube videos I feel like those don't work like they break a lot. The main know, uh, sheet enough. winch or the I've, Genoa? I've not had a lot of experience with roller furling Genoas, but we, I mean it's a it's I mean electric furling Genoas. We use a manual for furling Genoa. So, anyway. but you do want the electric main sheet winch. Yes, I, I mean, we have three electric winches at the helm. All the lines. Nope. Next one down. All the lines lead back to the helm, so it makes it really easy for the helmsman to control everything from there. So I'm really curious now because you're, you, you haven't, you, you don't necessarily, you, you weren't immediate in, immediately in agreement with me on that those don't work a lot, which makes me wonder like, crap, is that just something I've, I believe, heard of that, a belief that I've formulated that is not founded in any sort of fact, in which case. Yeah. Of all the boats I've ever done passages on, or bare boat chartered, or you know, or, or used, none of them have had the electric furling Genoa. But one of our buddy boats uh, down in Fort Lauderdale, uh, owned by a guy named Craig, he opted for the electric Genoa furling, and uh, you know he's excited about it, I guess, and wants the, wanted that, and so he opted for it. I don't know, I haven't heard whether it's worked great or not at all. But I just you know haven't really talked to him a whole lot about it, but that's what he opted for. So it's his. Preference. I think it's purely preference. And, okay, so and it it just makes basically furling and unfurling the Genoa easier than having to. And like, you're basically the pushing thing. a button to get the furling to roll up itself, or do you put the furling line around an electric winch and push that button? You know, to me, it's still gotcha. it's still essentially electric. But well, you right. save fifteen. You're still dollars. wrapping it. You're still wrapping it around a winch that's electric. So. Anyway, yeah, I, I mean that's just yeah. That to me, that sounds like something that can break. That's not really getting you 10x, yeah, 10x advance. And honestly, I've not used them enough to know that if it was to fail, would you still be able to do it manually? I, I honestly don't know. It probably that, depends on it, like how the teeth go right. and so on and so that's forth. Right. So, uh, Lon, I gives. I'm not even going to ask you about this because I give zero. F's about a TV and I actually give a F about a TV <laughs> but I love watching football but what I think I love even more than having a TV is you guys have a um, projector $468 I think is what you said yeah, it's, you yeah a projector that you project yeah, and you it's amazing yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. and I'm like Crystal I could clear sound we too. watched football on it the other night and, and it was awesome we, I, I wasn't involved. no you weren't I always but, say it's about the size of a Foster's beer can 
Um, but um, what's the brand of that, Elizabeth? That's Nebula. Big. Nebula. Nebula. And uh, we've been really pleased with it. It has a great digital, you mm -hmm. know, it, it'll adjust and, and auto focus. And uh, you can Bluetooth it to the boat speakers that oh, played over that. Nice. You can connect it to Wi Fi, has built in, you know, apps for uh, Netflix, or yep. you can broadcast from your laptop. I love it. All right. So I would not, we don't yeah, need we're any, not gonna TV do any of the provisions. provisions. We didn't either. No so TVs. do you guys have six solar panels up there? Only after four. market. We though, did them all after market. We yeah. did not get them from the factory. And one of the reasons is the same, for the same reason that the lithium batteries. With the time we ordered, we knew that we were going to order our solar panels from just catamarans. We thought we were going to get four 350 watt solar panels on the back here where they were going to build the arch for us to put them on mm -hmm. but by the time it came around the same price was available for 375 watt solar mm -hmm. panels so the technology changed for the same so price fast. they went ahead and upgraded for us which is kudos to them thank you so you take uh, 1500 watts of solar now on the back and then we went ahead and did the solera these are lg on the back solera on the front on the on the deck and they're 140 watts each, and there's four of those on the deck. So you got 280 and 280, or 560, mm -hmm. plus the 1500. So we're 2,060 watts of solar, uh, all done post factory. Love it. Okay. Just catamarans. And those ones that you guys have up there on the whatever that's called on the on the deck, yeah, hard deck. Yeah, on those are. I mean, those are almost like. A, you can walk on them. Yeah, you can yeah. walk on them. They're almost like a Very piece thin. of a rug, piece of carpet, mm -hmm. something, however you want to think about that. Um, and there's only four up there. That's what I was trying to remember. Yeah. So you could have, but there's space. Minimal. You could have got, you could have got six. We could have gotten a lot more, but the thing to think about there is if any, ours are broken into sections. So you have a section on the port side, a, right. in, which has a separate MPPT controller, the separate one from the starboard side, and then separate one from the aft uh, area here on the, on the, uh, um, sugar scoop area and if any one of those are shaded it's going to affect all of them unless you separate them like that and that's why mm. we did that so if the sun's coming up in the morning these you know the solar panels on the port side are going to be shaded and you mm. don't want it to affect all the other ones and that's why they're in three different groups, three different groups. so they're independent that way got Love it that. yep uh, so none of all of that's a no which i think one i probably did on the last one uh sterling alternator to battery charger yes well, we have Sterling alternators, which basically is helping. It's it's uh, increasing the ability for your alternator when your engines are running to recharge the start battery, and that's the Sterling chargers. And there are some alt other alternatives like the Balmar um, and some others that can do it even higher. But it's basically a way of turning up your alternator higher to get a better charge to your start batteries, and we have those. I like everything you just said. The 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 note here so that it includes a button at the helm to link engine batteries to the house batteries that's right and we did this and so the link from the house to is included in this so we didn't have to do the other one okay mm -hmm. this is one of those i was telling you about that i i couldn't really remember so when our salesman that. said you don't need this because you're getting this and Got this it. was so one we of those add examples that and then we need to go back can add it here and take it out on the other one yes that's exactly right just need to scroll back up and take it out on the other one wherever that was Link engine start batteries to house batteries. Right there, the 219 yep. or two. There you go. Yeah. All right. Um, oh. Right there. So, microwave. microwave oven and galley? And we did not do that. Okay. We actually found an oven we liked better. Post, I mean, on our own, it was a. It'll do convection oven, it'll do air fry and microwave. Nice. And it was a nice combo and we just waited on that. That's what I think every time we've done it, that's yeah. what we figured. Uh, so here's an interesting situation. Yep. Underwater lights, two blue mud and stern hot to ambient style and will yes. even attract fish at night. Okay. <laughs> we opted for this post factory and the ones that we got were recommended by Just Catamarans. And the, the explanation to us was that they, the brand that were recommended w would last longer mm -hmm. than a lot of the other brands that were being used in the industry. But what we found being right across the dock from the boats that had other different lights, uh, we, I thought uh, ours we, weren't. We literally, oh jeez. Drink. Drink. 
Pictures. We we Pictures. looked next door. You experienced. We experienced. You showed me and brought the experience. And showed to it me. right to you where other boats had brighter, better lights, and I thought it was just cloudy water where you could barely tell that our underwater lights were on. They're so dull, yeah. They were dull, but the reason for that is my understanding is that they are a lower wattage Watch. of LED bulb, but they'll last longer. Where some of these, you know, ultra lumen, you know, lumen lights or whatever they're called were a lot brighter but they would burn out and, and die quicker than than so it's we're a trade-off we're still researching that That's but right. if we're going to do it we're going to do it after market we are going to do it after market yeah, which sure. side note really really quick the water visibility is the best since we've been here so we should turn on the blue lights later after we do okay. this video sure plumbing electric fresh water flushing toilets what's your take on this because well how much does it cost you to add that Zero. Do it. And somebody <laughs> told us that it makes your toilets last longer. I, I was either well, a salesman or somebody told so us. So you're that. flushing your toilets now with fresh water from good, clean, non salt water. Yeah. So, number one, your heads don't stink. Yeah. And you're flushing with non salt water. And we went ahead and have just catamarans add an option for our master head only. Where if we were if we had a problem with our water maker or some other issue, we could switch our toilet only to, salt. to a salt water flush as an emergency if we you know were needing to conserve fresh water. And so that's what we did. Perfect. None of the old, other toilets have that option at this point. Got it. Water maker. We added ours post factory, and we opted for the Spectra uh, 1000, which can do a thousand gallons a day. Approximately 40 gallons an hour, and so way uh, more like than that. That one's 17 gallons but per hour. The thing to hear on a water maker is you got to determine if you want to run it off your 12 volt system, or your 110 system, or your 220 system. And so ours is a 110, and so you've got to be able to invert the power to mm -hmm. 110 for that to work. But it. it's a great system. We added the Z Ion system mm -hmm. as well, which helps it flush the system to keep from having to replace or pickle the system when you're gone for longer periods of time. Perfect, okay, so aftermarket. Aftermarket. Water treatment system, did you do a water treatment system? Well, that's what it's talking about, the Z-Ion, I believe, okay. yeah. And we, well, you did that that would be it's, the, it's the difference between the 23.3 and 25.8 okay. or whatever, but you yeah. did that post. We did, okay. yes. All right, seawater inlet seacock with hose lead above the water line. I have no idea what that For is. future water maker yeah. installation. Nope, you don't oh, need no. that. That's kind of like That's kind of like a provisioning, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So washer dryer, 220 volt installed in Port Corridor. Uh, I'm going to take this real fast because we were on uh, Sailing Happy Together, Law and I, and you've been on that boat yep. too. And I like the fact that they had made the vent, the workroom, and they put in a washer and a dryer and you you guys have the combo washer dryer we have the combo and they actually had to replace it at just catamarans because we were a 60 hertz electrical system and and it's a 110 washer dryer mm -hmm. the only negative it is a splendid system and it's a great washer dryer but sometimes a full load washing to dry is a four hour cycle mm -hmm. and the clothes in a lot of cases it's using so much it uses four or five gallons of water for the uh, you know to dry the clothes, so it's using steaming. steaming it, and the clothes thing. come out wrinkled, mm -hmm. and so that's one of the problems we've been a little disappointed with. But it's a great system; it's worked flawlessly. But yeah. you know that's just we'll one of those things you have to think about. Yeah. So we're definitely going to do. We'll have just yeah. cats do something on that. Um, dishwasher and galley. Dishwasher and galley. You guys do not have a dishwasher. Well, you kind of do, Carolyn. Yeah, that's, Caroline that's, or me. That's right. Uh, <laughs> We, we wanted to have the cabinet space to be able to store more things, and we felt like the dishwasher was just a, a little bit of a extra that, you know, it's gonna use a lot more water probably, and we just we just thought we needed the space for storage more than we needed, you know, the benefit of having a washer. And this washer is machine. an interesting situation because Law and I, and like, I don't mean this derogatory at all, but you and I are more minimalist for sure. Mm -hmm. than you guys are agreed that's yep. just nothing derogatory about yeah. that and so would would we want a dishwasher i mean we've been here thing i mean carolyn's been <laughs> carolyn's been doing the I've dishes done them once she's pretty twice, good yeah. But yeah. yeah but would we want a dishwasher i will feel like the the difference for us is if it's just the two of us it's not that big of a deal to wash our own dishes it wouldn't be that big like that much work but uh but then if we had people on we would just 
assigned duty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's I what like we're going to do as well. If we have Age people friend. on the boat, we will. they will become the dishwasher. Right. As yeah, long as I'm not turns. the dishwasher, I'm fine with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not opposed to having one either. You, I guess you could put one in, and then if you don't use it, if I become the dishwasher, I'm going to put them all in a bag and drop them, drive them behind the boat. That's how I'm going to clean the dishes. Uh, um, drag them in a in a net, like yep. and clean them that way. Yep. So we were saying no for now. So we're going to say no on that. Uh, deck wash, fitting, and pump. Yep, the, we yeah. have two deck washers on board, and they're high pressure. One is in the Ford in the Ford Lazarette on the starboard side, which you can use salt water or fresh water. Mm -hmm. If you're using fresh, obviously it's taking water out of your, your holding water, tanks, yeah. but you can opt for salt water. And then we have one on the um, on the stern as well for high pressure, but just catamarans added this one for us on the aft deck and the Ford one uh, was done at the factory. I'm pretty sure. So you guys didn't just get this from the factory, the stern shower hot no, water? No, the hot water shower, that's different. That's a, like if you wanna just, take a shower on the stern there's another it's not as high pressure for like washing the deck off but it is a hot and cold God. pull out nozzle on this sugar scoop yeah because if there's yeah. no if there's a, you know a minimal to no audience and i'm yeah. just going to shower on the there back you go. deck because right. i can get my tan and my shower you'd, on you'd fit in good in the uh saint martin area the <laughs> frenchy side the frenchy clothing side. is optional heating refrigeration and gas So, cockpit 12 volt refrigerator. We added that as that's basically what we call our beverage fridge. Love that, yeah. And we do. We did not opt for the grill mm -hmm. um, because it's an electric grill, mm -hmm. and we just we like cooking on propane yeah. and like a real grill, and so we opted not to do that. Yeah, and you and I talked about this a little bit. Um, I'm really curious about whether or not I think I could. Even if it does get too hot, manufacture a box that would keep the heat off of any part of the deck and just use the Oscar Wilde um, thing where I can really get a nice sear on, on the grill. I don't know what it is about grills, and it's not just like the it's bow grills. Oscar we Wilde. have friends that Oscar. Oxo. Oxo. I thought it was Oscar Wilde. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The um, I think gr grills are just getting so hit and miss. Yeah. And I want a grill that's going to put a crazy good sear. I, yeah. I would grill... I do grill almost every day, yeah. honestly, whenever I'm at home and so on and so forth. Yeah. So, uh, We've had some good steaks, though, while you're here, but I agree. Yeah. It's not super, super hot where it gets that sear like you would at home. And right. Maybe it's an option where we end up putting the sear in a cast iron skillet on the, yeah. on the propane and then move it to the grill or something. There's a way to do it. A hundred percent. The yeah. problem with that is now you got a bunch of smoke in your room because I set up the smoke detect detectors <laughs> at home all the time. Uh, it's just easier uh, to... Yeah. to do something yeah. outside and I'm yeah. really curious about that yeah whatever it is Oscar Wilde it was you said Oscar Wilde the other day that's not what it was but I can't rem I don't know what it was it was all something yeah anyway we can actually put the link yeah if somebody below. wants it comment we'll it's we'll all stainless figure, steel I we'll think it would last it. long enough to make me happy and we'll that's literally it out. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get another drink you need more drink Drinking He's water. drinking water. water it's no fair. Hey, nobody knows that. That could be a beer. <laughs> we said Topo Chico earlier, they so I think yeah, they do that's know. True. So that's a no. Wine cooler in the galley. We did not opt for that. We could have. With with that, you yeah, can in the galley. Also... There's an extra. You could do a wine oh, inside yeah, the yeah. galley. And we did not opt for that. Um, we could get an ice maker from the factory. We did not opt for that. We did it with just catamarans. Yeah, we'll and we did a, a Raritan or whatever the brand name is. It's been a great decision. That thing spits out more ice. It's amazing. Than we could, it is incredible. We're very happy with our ice maker post factory with just catamarans. 12 volt refrigerator and galley. Did you guys do that? We have got, yeah, we've got, you know, the original fri freezer fridge. It comes mm -hmm. with it, and then so we opted for a modification. And that right there, and then you modified from there, right? Yes, we added an extra combo freezer fridge with our modification of the uh, nav, nav station. station. That's right. I like so, that. So we have but a total. But we could also do that in the utility room if we wanted yeah, to. Yeah, we could. You, that's what you. I think that's what you had said previously, yeah. but we may not. All right, so we knocked that out. Deck and hull. Uh, exterior pack gray charcoal. Yes, we did not want to do the captain's blue, or you know, it's just a real dark blue and navy blue, and we stayed with the gray yeah. option for it the exterior char. pack. It looks like, huh? It looks like a charbo. Yeah, it kind of does, and it's more of a khaki, honestly, to us. But 
No, no, the blue is. No, I know, but the oh, okay. the gray, the uh, what they call charcoal gray to us looks like khaki. Mm. Yeah. But what is this on? On like the cell bag. Okay. Um, oh yeah, you know, charcoal yeah. gray for sure. Right. Okay. Helsman Enclosures, you did that after my We did it post factory with Creative Canvas out of mm -hmm. Fort Lauderdale. My, from what I've heard from other boaters, it was they weren't totally happy with the quality of construction from the factory with enclosures. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Creative Canvas can make modifications if you want certain things done differently, and they did a good job for us. The only thing we would add at this point, we got sunshades on the port side and one sunshade on the starboard side, but we would opt for doing sunshades on the aft stern, and uh, we did not. Mm -hmm. We do have an enclosure to keep yeah. the weather out, but we don't have sunshades if we were to be tethered into the sunset, mm -hmm. and it could get a little hot for a couple hours. So, well, so and those sunshades are what you used as your projector screen. That's right. They yeah. doubled as our projector screen. So basically, awesome. you guys got none of this, and you did it all post, post factory. That's right. Mm -hmm. Shoe locker under helm platform. So that's the little locker there that I mm -hmm. use as my little toolbox. Like and that's you, so my go-to toolbox. You, you, you we did. didn't we didn't opt for that. It just ended up coming. We got it and didn't really choose it. Hopefully they won't send me an invoice for it now. <laughs> but uh, we did not opt for that. But we ended up getting it. It was almost like a standard thing they're just giving. And it's it's not a bad space but i wouldn't use it for a shoe locker. so aft cockpit cushions seats only aft cockpit cushions yeah. seats and backrest so that's we did seats and back yes this we did all the cushions on the whole boat with the exception we did the ford seating area cushions but we did not do the layout cushions on the ford deck um just because we you know we're kind of thinking when you when you start you pulling these cushions the out and one. putting them away and stowing them is a lot of cushions when you include the flybridge, the cushions yeah. in here, and the forward cushion is a lot. They did seats only though in forward, didn't you? You didn't do backs. No, we did. You did in the forward, you did backs yeah, we too? did backs as well. Okay, so seats and back. So we did not do. You did the home seat cushion. Yep. So one thing, didn't uh, Happy Together have a different helm station they where you can it. sit back? They actually modified theirs to go a little bit wider mm -hmm. and, and move deeper. the whole thing back right. and, and make it two inches deeper, deeper. To, so they could sit three people at a time at the yeah. helm. And we did not choose to do that. Yeah. Um, so. But that's an aftermarket. Well, that's we did have them stabilize a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it stabilized yeah. it with Creative Canvas when they did their canvas deal, attached another um, connector to stabilize their uh, enclosure and it helped stabilize the helm seat. I added the helm seat cushion. Okay. Um, four deck lounging cushions. Those are the ones you said you didn't do. Right. Partial That's right. four deck. I did not do this. Uh, stainless steel cockpit table stools. Um, stainless steel cockpit table stools. Oh, mm -hmm. those are the ones that are right here. Yeah. And we did not opt for yeah, those. I don't, I don't we think we so. put the Dometic there and it works good. It can double as an extra seat yeah for sure so. uh stainless steel dive bottle racks okay if there's one thing i wish i would have done it would have been to add these because i've priced trying to get dive bottle racks done and it's cheaper from the factory this is a good ad okay. it's it will give you two dive bottles yep, right there. on either side and i've i've not found anybody can do them and i wish i'd have gotten them from the factory so good to know. that was one mistake we made that i would have changed had but it will crowd your walkway a little bit more, obviously. Uh, I don't personally leather covered steering wheel. I don't think I care about that. We did not uh, for black that. Black powder coated steering wheel. We did not for that either. Custom stainless steel davit system. Um, that's what we did in lieu of the platform, which we were originally sold on. But as you can tell, there's a significant price difference there. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, I didn't say, it. I almost did, but I didn't. So we were talking about this earlier, and you guys have seen a boat where they had had to cut loose. That was you guys, right? They had to cut loose. And well, like, we actually saw it in the marina where it was actually tilted, sitting there, and they could not the leave platform. because the platform was tilted mm -hmm. and had a failure. And it was on a 58-foot leopard, but we, Still we had talked to a lot of people, asked a lot of leopard salesmen, leopard engineers and everything else, and they said, if you're planning on going around the world, they would 
recommend the, the Davit system because you're if you look at the Davit you're system, you're skipping. But the Davit yeah. system is what lowers your dinghy. That's no, right. I know. Oh. But we have a motor built in here, and if yeah. that motor was to fail, all I would have to do is still run lines through these pulleys and run it to a winch, right? And winch this thing back up, and right. we're still going without an issue. But we did that at just cast, right? We didn't do that from the factory. The Davit system? Uh -huh. No, no, that was, no, that was from the factory oh, that way. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So we went So the the moral of the story is, as much as I would absolutely love to have this lifting platform because you can use it as a swim deck which yep. we've been on boats that have mm -hmm. a swim deck drop i feel like down. if you're in the caribbean you can oh, yeah. drop it down That's where you cool. can be half Everybody in the water half sit, on, cool. like, sit on it and... yep. we were in love with it too yeah. love it think it's a great concept but when we really boiled down the reality of it and the risk we weren't willing to take the risk of having an issue and it's an expensive option. Well, it's what a, you were talking about too is to actually get to the motor. It was like built into the hole, and there was. Like I looked the when hole. we went and looked. You, the next time you get a chance, you should go look at it, and then I yeah. just want to see. Uh, I would like Facetime me so I can see your <laughs> face when you see it, because you're gonna be like, really? Yeah. Like it's so peculiar the way they did it. With yeah. all the different ways you could raise and lower a yeah. swim deck, yeah. I just. It's yeah. the fascinating. That's it the way they constructed it. Well, Didn't make sense. We've been happy with our choice so far. It's pretty so easy to, it. to launch the dinghy, and it's been quick. But it gives and us a good place to put the sewer. Yeah, the that's right. that is true. Yeah. And then you guys also got like a big swim deck or something that you can yeah. like a up. floating platform. Floating we bought platform. an inflatable dock that we can put in the same spot to do essentially the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm sure that didn't cost an additional fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> no. no. So no. So we'll we'll go with that. The data system. And then Teak aft. Winch type lifting. No, we didn't do any. That's just a feature. Right? That's a feature on the platform that you can put those right. fixed chocks to rest the dinghy on. So those are just yeah. a few details of the platform. Teak aft cockpit table. Mm -hmm. So Teak, that's this. That's the cockpit table. Instead of see. the fiberglass table, and, and I custom built this yeah. one from right. wood for with the Elizabeth specs from a building downtown Fort Smith. So I don't know whether we or not we've talked about this, but I talked to or this he's no longer there, Peter. That I talked to about this, I asked him. There's, in my opinion, no reason why this table can't have the exact same Cap raising and lowering capability that the yeah. galley galley has. And then you could have another giant big bed here yeah. movie nights. for movie yeah. nights yeah. and yeah. so on the, and so the forth. The only thing I would say is that I know that this table is 61 inches by 61 inches. <laughs> the one in there is smaller, but I, 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 and you have three stabilizers underneath the table here. We have one in there, but, but if you do one bigger one out here, it should be able to do the same thing. So I agree, it should be able to be done. And that's what I think We've talked about this repeatedly. I'll have that done by Just Cats yeah. after the fact, or I'll figure out a way to do it. Yeah. That I'm, I'm not a big, well, at this juncture of my life, <laughs> wanting to do projects, but that's a project that I think would be really cool because you'd really make a great big movie area, something like that. Where literally. It, did I say literally? <laughs> uh, no, you didn't. I was just okay. kidding. I was just giving you a time. He <laughs> did he? I, didn't, I mean, oh. he repeated it. Ah, well, there you go. <laughs> Did I say? <laughs> All right, composite teak decking. Decking. Um, you guys had that done aftermarket. Yep. We uh, opted the for the same price too, right? Plast plastique. Yeah, it was around the same price. We used a plastique product, and we did the wide plank uh, with the white lines because the white are considered a little less hot in the summer than the black. It still does get hot mm -hmm. in the hot summer with direct sun but it's not as hot as the black lines. And so we opted for that and we like it. We did it in the uh, showers as well. Mm -hmm. It's a non-skid, non-slip, and and we're, we're pretty happy with that. I like it. It's like yeah. a little bit cushioned too. It is, a little softer on your feet. Mm -hmm. so. I think we decide, Law and I are uh, in a bit, I, I have some issues with, with it. And, and my issues with it are bird shit on yours and stained it for a second but you did get it out yep. and that I, that caused me immense anxiety. irritation <laughs> versus you which you handled that so well I still can't believe I was like so pissed on your behalf um, I'm like how does a bird shit stain this stuff um, well they ate berries or something yeah and then the other thing that I will say is it provides a lip all the way around everything that yeah. captures 
it dirt helps run and the hair. water and stuff but, but yeah. it captures dirt it and holds hair stuff, and yeah. it holds stuff in it yeah. and so that's why i'm a little i'm a little less gung-ho but you're like we're getting it so it looks richer than just the fiberglass we're getting it so it doesn't matter it, what you it think. looks richer than the white fiberglass Maybe which looks like a charter you have your shop back and clean yeah. it out it'll be fine you can do it yay <laughs> all right um so we'll get that aftermarket yeah but all that's Post. Sales and rigging. Oh, this is something we didn't know we're much the, about. Yeah, we didn't. We're, we're on the home stretch on this, but yeah, I, I'm really curious on your thoughts on this. Okay, without going straight down the line here, but one thing to know is if you choose to get the bow sprit option, your trampoline up front will be divided with a runner down the middle, mm -hmm. so you have two smaller trampolines to support the bow sprit, which will allow you the option to do a code zero sale, mm -hmm. which is a lighter wind, downwind sail. It's like a big Genoa. Some people refer to it as a Jenniker, because it's a mix between a Genoa and a Spinnaker. That's what I was yes. trying to talk about the yeah. other day. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a mix. It's a lighter wind sail. It's not as much of a ballooner like a asymmetrical Spinnaker or, or symmetrical Spinnaker, but it is a lighter material, and it is on a furling like a Genoa, but it's, it doesn't have that sun protection, so when you're not on a crossing or something, you want to take it down and put it away. Mm -hmm. But when you're getting ready for a multi-day passage, you put it out, set it up, and you can unfurl it just like you do the Genoa, you know, and uh, and it's mostly meant for downwind. So, we, but we still have to go down the line. So, so okay. asymmetric spinnaker running rigging. I did not choose that. And why did you not? Because you can buy that, I mean, you can do that after the fact. That's just the rigging for it. That does not include the sale. So you yeah. see here, the rigging is $1,000. The sale is another 7200 Oh, 72 I can't even read. Yep. 72 20 And so we just, if we were going to be going around the world and knew we were doing a lot of downwind, downwind sales, we might look at that option. But we knew we were going to be doing that for a few years. So we waited on that. Okay. So, yeah. Um, boom cover. Yep stack pack um in most you know some people call this the uh this the uh this the sail bag you know ours will zip up and cover the sail and Protect i don't remember they, they've changed this a little bit since we've ordered ours but that's a sail bag yeah, there's the a boom cover yeah yeah it didn't cover the entire boom it just covers the sail where it zips up and all this but so that was standard i believe yeah for the main sail yeah they're just making you pay yeah. for it yeah and so we did opt for the bow sprit with yeah. the roller furler. And we did the code zero. Mm -hmm. And you did the code zero instead of the code, code D. D. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Well, the code zero from what everything I'd read and talked to other people was it is uh, a little bit more versatile. It's mm -hmm. it's uh, can sail upwind a little bit too, not only downwind. and. Uh, and so based on recommendation of others that's what we chose to go with so i know in rat situations either one is a good sale to have but there's a point at which you only have so much storage for so many sales and you don't want to be carrying 10 sales so based on the recommendation of others like randy and lenny on happy together the code zero they were very happy with us they as a matter of fact they quoted it as saying that's one of our favorite sales mm -hmm. and so uh, we've had good luck with it as well and enjoyed using it all right, the square top main, main sail. So basically, it provides more surface area essentially That's on right. the sail. More square footage. And I already know from the next things we're getting ready to do, we are going to get the the flybridge. We enjoy that space. Mm -hmm. You guys enjoy that the space. Yeah. And if you want to sail the crap out of your boat and try to get the most performance, meaning speed per per wind and mm -hmm. you, you know, won't miles be getting the lounge first. Of you're all. not going to get the lounge. Yeah. And so I I quite frankly don't care that much um i just want to have a good good damn time interesting so i don't care about interesting it. you said that though one of the last comments and stuff on some a few blogs that we've read said that they're not even offering the op, offering the performance version anymore they're all flybridge really? and as a matter of fact they just launched the 42 the leopard 42 with a flybridge that's going to replace the 40 which did not have a flybridge option interesting. and they're all flybridge so the flybridge has been a very popular option yeah. people love it and the app may be greater windage in yeah. docking and stuff but who cares it's you're there for enjoyment and yep. so we're, we love it i just don't think that that i'm i mean it just the, the value and if you buy this once you're gonna have to buy it every, oh, i guess you don't have to buy it every time but i just don't see the point of it so yeah. we're not going to do that jazz 
Uh, performance options. We did not do the gory props from the factory. We actually opted to do max props um, post factory with just catamarans that are the feathering props. We've been very happy with them. Uh, they've performed well in forward, in reverse, and haven't hardly noticed it. But um, you know, when you're underway and can turn the engines off, they will feather and provide less drag through the water. So we've we've been happy with our uh, max props. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the upgraded Super T lines, the salesman said not super a big deal. No, we did not opt for that. And then the same thing, um, upgraded Ultra yeah. X Dyneema Norlin yeah. High Performance yeah. North Sales. We didn't do that as well. I know a lot of people that, you know, Dyneema is a great product. It'll last a long time, but we are not going to choose to spend the money on Dyneema until we need to. And when we're replacing our current lines with something, we might do the Dyneema option. Um... But so in, in cases black. like Randy and Lenny with Happy Together, they changed out all of their lines to Dyneema and kept the factory lines as their backups. But they've mm -hmm. got a full set of backups now, but it, it is an expensive thing to do. Is that a black code zero? Is that what that is? Upgraded no. black. Is that one? Uh, Air mine, uh, it says a code zero high sale. High performance. The high performance sales, uh, in my understanding, are uh, a lot less forgiving, you know? So mm -hmm. if you're a racer and that kind of thing, they're a little less forgiving, and we opted not to mess with that right now, just because yeah. there's more money and to get I get, mean, we're new, get so experience. Probably and, isn't yeah, gonna may even, even not make a difference to yeah, most. of These us. are like all upgraded sales. None yeah. of that really high end stuff. Yeah, performance. We sense. don't. We yeah. don't. Right. We don't need performance. General equipment. We're getting there, guys. We're getting yeah, there. We're almost there. We are uh, gonna do a custom anchor. I, okay. So, and you guys don't have. I'm like the mantis anchors like i follow them on instagram like everybody that's got one people upgrade to yeah. them like the mantis anchors seem like the, the shit no the rockna have you looked at the rockna no okay to that's me what you got we the delta came with the boat essentially and we kept it because when they're bringing the boat over and moving it and this and that it has to have an anchor on it in case there's an emergency so i don't know if you'll even be able to choose not to get the delta anchor with it so we did we took it and that's now our spare anchor and we chose to get the Rockna, the 88-pound uh, uh, Rockna. We love it. To me, Rockna and Mantis are two of the best anchors in the market. And mm -hmm. and I know there's arguments for both. We just we like the Rockna. Uh, the Mantis comes where you can take it apart and break it down right. the bolts and stuff. The Rockna is all one piece one and piece. built. They both use the ring shank that goes over the top right. in case it rolls. They both dig well. I think you won't go wrong with either one. Yeah. We've been happy with the Rockna. And the Delta that came from the factory is our backup now. That's so funny that you said you got an 80, an 80 pound essentially yeah. Rockman. Because whenever I looked at the Mantis, I also was going through the Mantis, Mantis thing, and I, I, I think I got a 70 or 80 pound is what I ended up coming up with. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm an overkill yeah. kind of guy. Yeah. And I was like, this that. ought to hold. <laughs> kind of deal and it was something like the same weight but with yeah. the mantis essentially yeah, and so right. um i just i i've basically avoided uh the anchors on here if they make me get it they make me get and it also, i'll probably anchor dicker with them and try to get them to did just you guys it. do aftermarket anchor chain we did not okay we i think ours came with around 230 feet of, of anchor chain and you can you can buy lighter weight chain and different mm -hmm. options there and that's a whole nother you know video basically but uh, we decided to take what it came with with the delta anchor and left it at that but if you're going to the pacific there's a lot of places that you can't anchor in less than you know 100 foot of water you've got to have a, a lot of chain and so a lot of people will opt to add and get up to 350 to 400 feet of chain so that's what so, i've yeah. picked every single time is this 330 feet just right out of the yeah. gate yeah, yeah. That's more than what we have, but we have room for more. It's just more weight. Right. And there are new technologies now that have lighter, just as strong uh, chain, like the G3 or the G5 is a new new thing that's out. So the anchor bridle, you guys got an aftermarket anchor bridle that you guys really, really like? No, this is the one that came from the factory, actually. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, and right. We're happy with it. It works well. It's one of those things that, though, like anything over time, it's going to wear out. We're going to have to fix it or replace it. But it's, but it, we it's worked well. The... We did change out the swivel. And the hook that, you know, the bridle, once you let the chain down, you connect the bridle to the chain. And we switched out to a Mantis 
a chain holder so it, it switches around and wraps around and locks in so we had times originally in the very beginning days of hooking the just a regular snap hook over the chain where if the tide or current shifted the bridle chain would fall off mm. and we would just be pivoting on the chain itself tied to the windlass with the lock on but when you have that bridle connected properly it really keeps you from swiveling or to spinning too much uh, so that, I just feel like getting all of that aftermarket from something like Mantis is probably going to make more sense for us. Yeah. Fenders, moorings, and spring lines. Yes. <laughs> I, I know you just ordered I, I, I ordered more and more and more. And when we were dealing with hurricane season, we wanted to make sure the boat looked like a, a baby in a three padded diapers, you know, kind of thing. And we had, I think at one point when we had to leave the boat, I left it with. 11 lines and 10 fenders <laughs> and I was ready to put more out on the other side just in case something just in happened case another right. boat and so, along. Yeah. yeah honestly we we took what they gave us from the factory and added to it with extra large round fenders um, to, just to give us extra special cushion and knowing when you're driving a catamaran off the dock you want to be able to pivot on the stern or on the bow and you want a little bit thicker you know fender to to pivot off of. So you have yeah. more like round, like ball ones. Yeah. Than, yeah. Those than extras. The, yeah. So, I mean, the moral of the story is probably get these and then just know you're going to add, you're going to be spending, because yeah. you said this will be like enough to get you a, a pop on They're the ones expensive. you just had to They're buy. Expensive. So, or the ones you chose right. to buy. So, yep. but we'll, we'll start with that and just know, yep. Hey, we're going to be adding to, uh, we're going to be adding to that jam. So, uh, and then this is relative cause this is commission and delivery, yep. which, um, required yeah i mean that's required and then that's required safety package did you guys do your life raft with or yes mm -hmm. we got that from okay. the factory and um they actually came through and what's nice about just catamarans working with them is they actually are the company that does the post the warranty work for the factory so if there's okay. a warranty issue just catamarans is the one that does that work it. and so they know the boats well but we opted to move our life raft from the seat right underneath we're sitting up to the deck because this is too valuable a space, I think, uh, for a life raft that we that hope we'll never use. space where you guys put it to. It's a brilliant spot. Uh, I think so, too. That was just Catamaran's recommendation, and uh, we like it there, but there's too much valuable spot right underneath us that we wanted to use for other things like snorkeling gear and stuff we're going to be getting to all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you want to add that? Yeah. The safety package. The other thing I'll mention while we're on this delivery commissioning and things is we were actually looking into the fact that we could maybe fly to Cape Town and drive the boat back ourselves. Yep. But they were adamant that insurance companies in the U.S. would not allow you to do that. Yep. You because have to take possession in, in the, the U.S. US and, before they'll cover the insurance. And that's exactly what we found, and so that's exactly what happened. So you have to pay for yep. it to be delivered. They put it on a freighter, and it, you know, took so the slow boat. So then, do we have over. to do the very, very top one then? It says it's required regardless. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. but there's the option of having it delivered on a freighter or having a captain bring it over, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's and, still an option. Right, but remember we've had Sunrise had Yeah, we've seen some that. issues where boats have had issues when it was delivered on a water delivery where it was, you know, being sailed. And uh, so I, I think so being on a freighter is better. Law, Law and I have talked about this because on one hand, I'm like, man, if you have a captain bring it over, he's going to work out a lot of kinks because he's going to be driving that yep. thing like a long ass ways. That's but right. then on the flip side is it's like. So what's the difference between a CE and a USCG safety package? U.S. Coast Guard versus uh, um, yeah. for in-water deliveries. That's, Both of uh, them, yeah. Well, I, know, I think if you're coming to the U.S., you want the U.S. Coast Guard safety package versus the uh, yeah. So when we get to Fort Lauderdale, just catamarans swapped out all of the uh, fire extinguishers for U.S. Uh, approved fire extinguishers. So they went from the red or orange to white. And, uh, so okay, so we didn't out. want freight delivery we do want no, freight. you would yeah okay we did want freight. Well, you either got to get freight, freight or you got to have somebody water. bring it and it's yeah. it's you don't have to save that much yeah. no it's like yeah. 20 grand difference we weren't trying to save money i was literally thinking if somebody that's a seasoned captain wanted to there we go yeah so that's interesting it just said one million something but this says this current special may also be a good choice for you 9.99 
that just piqued my interest. Yeah, so go ahead and download that. Download this? Yeah, so if you, so that should be a PDF. So. Oh, so it did. The total price that we built was one million eighty three thousand one million eighty three thousand mm -hmm. but they're giving, they're giving a rebate of eighty four thousand seven fifty four if you order it by a certain time I yeah. imagine yeah so let's go ahead and if you call today <laughs> yeah so anyway like we got to wrap this video up quick fast and in a hurry because it's been yep. a long video but yep. there you have it like from the uh, we're gonna call you an expert because you definitely have a lot more information than we have any time that we've built this for sure and even though it took a while but I think this is the bare minimum on what we would want uh, the, the only thing I would say this does not include would be your dinghy mm. and you'll spend ten to twenty thousand on that and don't forget your solar addition if all you're going to do that. And all too. the after factory stuff like so extra blinds, yeah. enclosures, Which all those things are not. we're going to go over that with you too. What yeah. you guys spend aftermarket, we'll another, but we'll do a different video. Yeah, we'll do a different, different video. Sure. And yeah, the other yeah. thing, and we'll, again, just to wrap it up because it has been a long video, the one thing that's different from last time, you and I built this or did one of these, and even from when you guys bought yours, I talked to Bob Ross uh, over at Leopard. And, not the painter. And, not, not, not the painter. Not the painter. Uh, He's not alive and, anymore. And Unless you're Fort Lauderdale. Oh, mushrooms doing something, talking to dead <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> in Fort Lauderdale, and he said that basically, um, with just cats, the way I understood it, and I kind of questioned him a few times on this, you could roll in this aftermarket stuff now into the financing, um, which you weren't able to do before. Previously. Uh, previously. So. You can get this, which it looks like, you know, they're offering nine ninety nine, and then you'd be able to go to Just Cats and get your additional stuff stuff done um, and roll it all in. To the same financing. To the same financing. That's cool. To, that was not an option for us. Right, yeah. Because um, I'm sure we're going to spend some significant money. And we'll, we'll shoot another video. You guys watch for that. Like this, thumbs up, all that jazz. Thank you, guys. Thanks to Kevin King yeah. and Elizabeth from the North 40 over there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on sailing southern charm for uh for just sharing all this information with us and, and check with them you guys. out because they are also chartering as we told you where the, where can they find you guys sailing southern charm.com all right literally. 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 literally literally cheers <laughs>